The anger of the Lord is upon all nations. Repent. There is one coming who will baptize with fire and the Holy Spirit. One whose coming has been of old, from time everlasting, soon to be among us. Greater than all of us, one whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. Now, I've explained many times why nobody can beat me. Many, many times. And you have never once seen a single logical argument presented. Just people hiding behind mainstream misconceptions. It's insane, really. There's a lot of misconceptions in life. And for people to clarify them, they really need to do their research. They don't understand. They'll say stupid things. They just don't get it. They don't get very simple things that when you think about them, you, you realize. Because they really didn't think about them. They're just too stuck on the misconception. Like force equals mass times acceleration. So speed and the ability to accelerate from no, not moving at all, your hand not moving at all, to striking the person has everything to do with force. And the mass, you know, has is also important. But also... It doesn't matter how hard you can hit and how much of a hit you can take when we're talking about combat arts. No man in the history of humanity has been able to withstand a knife in the carotid artery that was left un, you know, addressed. They didn't put pressure on it. No one, no matter how tough they are, no matter how hard they can hit, there are certain blows that will say you're done. Every single day for years, I have refined my precision strikes, drugged covertly on psych meds and otherwise. Every single day for years. If you are a big, strong person, you are like a punching bag that barely moves. I say it again, if you are a big, strong person, your mass now works against you. You are a pin cushion that barely moves. You really gonna outmaneuver someone as precise as me? I tell you the truth, so help me. Even if your life depended on it, and that is the point now, it isn't. It's war arts, it's combat arts. Even if your life depended on it, you could not you would die. Now, that is what martial arts is. If you want to make a sport out of it and argue you'd win at your sport, you know, you might be right. Yeah, there's a whole lot of people that can beat me at wrestling. But so help me God, in ancient combat, it would not come to that. You would be struck down. That's it. On to the next. Precise blow takes him down. Slice, slice. Takes him down. You know? It's over. Next, 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 next. You know? Maybe I kick back for a second, block a few blows, catch my breath after striking down, you know, 15, 20 of them. Then I go back to battle. Maybe I stay in the formation, keep striking out, I'm doom, 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 doom. Take down my guy, take down the guy next to him. You know, create a domino effect through their enemy lines that causes us to win the battle. Because these are the skills that matter in combat and this kind of higher logic and honesty are the skills that matter when it comes to being a leader I stood the course I weathered the storm I stayed strong tortured for years since before 2012, literally tortured for years, I did not break. I did not go crying to them for help. I knew exactly how I could minimize the torture. I did not stop. I did not hold my tongue. I continued to tell the truth. I stood on my own 
ten toes as a man of God with a superior argument, a superior martial art I created myself. When Bruce Lee talked, people listened to him and I could beat him in under five seconds in ancient combat, so help me. I would strike him down like the rest. So when I talk, only idiots do not consider it. Only fools do not respect it. What do you call someone who listens to inferior minds and not the wisest and the best, if not a fucking fool and an idiot? We are not talking wax on, wax off, motherfuckers. We are not talking, hey, grasshopper. We are talking the highest form of intelligence. And you need to understand. There's going to be inferior minds who say bitch shit like you need to get over yourself. No, no. They need to listen to me. Even if I have to make them feel like a fucking moron for not doing it in the first place in order for them to do it. They need to get ripped off their high horses of social normative, socially normative nonsense and listen to the voice of reason. These are the same liars who would, told, who would have told John the Baptist, you need to get over yourself. You're nobody special. You're just a poor madman living in, you know, screaming in the wilderness. And I'm sure they did tell him that before they came to arrest him. But sometimes when a man is inspired by nat what is natural and supernatural and he has something to say, it's not just offensive to God and humanity, but that person should vehemently declare the importance of what he has to say and who he is. And ironically, my Christian name is John. So you motherfuckers need to start listening to this voice that comes to you from the wilderness of the most populated state in America. The top martial artist, the closest man to God, not just because I say so, because I do what must be done in the name of God. Just like Samson, I have the potential to bring down the pagan blasphemous temple and bring in the truth. And it should be written down. It is up to you people, just like the scribes in the Bible, to tell the tale of the man who was closest to God and use that power to triumph over the boot-licking scum. That is the story that must be told and retold forever. How I triumphed over Babylon. Their top trainers, their top fighters, their top martial art masters putting their heads together. Military, civilian, you name it, I triumphed. They hid in the modern day equivalent of caves. My story tells the glory of God, the power of being a spiritual man of God from your birth onwards and embracing it masterfully. The masterful application of the Holy Spirit of God. That is my story. And only fools let their petty complexes get in the way of them retelling it over and over again. And only a fool doesn't understand why I would never sell out. They pretty much try to make these little deals, you know, out of harassing me because they know that I'll never take it. They just want me to, to they just want to remind me of the worldly pleasures and make me think about what life would be like if I wasn't the closest to God. And I guarantee you, by saying the truth that I am the closest to God, it will enrage, it will infuriate these cowards. They wish to make you believe that one of them is the closest to God. And another one of them is the top martial artist. And another one of them is this, that, and the other thing. They don't want to give me my rightful place in society. 
because I deserve to be the spiritual leader, the leader of leaders of this nation at least. A supreme leader, not just a supreme champion. My story is the story of why to never conform ever, ever, ever. Just like they denied Jesus his place, the greatest tragedy of all times. When it comes to government, when it comes to the social order, the greatest tragedy of all time was denying Jesus his rightful place as king of the world. And the greatest tragedy in American history when it comes to the order of society is denying me my rightful place as spiritual leader and acknowledged top martial artist of America. That is a sickness that Satanists, the worst criminals, the LGBT community, feminists, atheists and racists have severely. It is a severe sickness. It is a severe mind, body, soul illness. Because the three are connected. I know a lot of you, if not all of you listening to my videos, have betrayed me in many, many ways. And you will continue to betray me. But I also have faith that God will set this straight. The story will get out one way or another and you will spend the rest of your lives knowing that you weren't the person who had the heart to get the message out. The message is more powerful than me having my rightful place. Just like the message of the Bible, if Jesus wished to be the king of the world, he could have been. But he said it is a more powerful message to show you people what happens when you let a bunch of non-Christian garbage determine the social order. They crucify the Son of God and they deny him his rightful place. They mocked him. They said he is a madman. Let's give him a cape and a crown of fucking thorns. The message was quite clear. When you are dealing with the enemies of all of humanity and God, they will play out the most deserving among you as crazy. They will mock him and they will use secret societies and all the institutions at their disposal to do this. Apparently, some of you didn't get the message. I'll take as many men as you need and arrest the Nazarene. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Eisenhower. Oil, resources, and livelihood are all involved. So is the very structure of our society. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. We must learn from Eisenhower's words and the top martial artists. I have been denied my rightful place in society by the greater military industrial complex.
To make a long story short, it's a bunch of spiritual bottom feeders with complexes and the military industrial complex. Notice he brings up that they also affect society spiritually. Now I want you all to ask yourselves, what does he mean by the spiritual influence of the military industrial complex? And what types of spiritual philosophies and spirituality do you think these murderous, mass rapists, covert drugging, covert operation, black op operation bitches would push, if not Satanism, in all of its detestable, disconcerting, and unforgivable forms? Three and a half million men and women are directly engaged in the defense establishment. Now, this conjunction of an immense military establishment and a large arms industry is new in the American experience. The total influence, economic, political, even spiritual, is felt in every city, every state house, every office of the federal government. We recognize the imperative need for this development, yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. Our toil, resources and livelihood are all involved. So is the very structure of our society. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals so that security and liberty may prosper together. Even if you come at it from an American perspective, You must consider what the presidents have said. Cheating is deplorable, but cheating in a secret way that you spend millions of dollars to cover up is absolutely appalling. The tens of billions of dollars that are spent on propaganda and marketing between the pharmaceutical sector the government and political groups and campaigns alone proves my point beyond any doubt. Whether Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, the Green Party or whatever, if you do not address the dangers associated with secret societies, if you do not support our constitution from a very logical pragmatic and practical point of view. You are un-American garbage. Ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, 
to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections. Let me stop right there for one moment. Where are all you cowards who say, where's your tinfoil hat now? Where are all you bitches now? Did you say that Kennedy needed to wear a tinfoil hat? Maybe it's because I'm black. On intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. Let's hear that again. And keep in mind there's a bunch of cowards, shills, and traitors to humanity and God who wish to pretend that this conspiracy does not exist, it's never existed, and that anyone who would even touch on it a little bit must automatically be mentally ill. After all the different forms of psychiatric abuse, they're even using psychiatry to cover up the great conspiracy that has already been proven beyond any doubt by the presidents of the past, scholars of the past, and certainly the most virtuous and honor, honorable scholars today, such as myself. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed.